As Allied troops entered and occupied German territory during the later stages of World War II, mass rapes of women took place both in connection with combat operations and during the subsequent occupation. Most Western scholars agree that the majority of the rapes were committed by Soviet servicemen, while some Russian historians maintain that these crimes were not widespread. The wartime rapes had been surrounded by decades of silence. According to Antony Bivor, whose books were banned in 2015 from some Russian schools and colleges, NKVD Soviet secret police files have revealed that the leadership knew what was happening, but did little to stop it. Some Russian historians disagree, claiming that the Soviet leadership took some action. Topic. Soviet troops Historians have written about sexual violence committed by the armies of the Western Allies and the Red Army as these forces fought their way into the Third Reich and during the period of occupation. On the territory of Nazi Germany, it began on 21 October 1944 when troops of the Red Army crossed the bridge over the Angerap Creek marking the border and committed the Nemersdorf massacre before they were beaten back a few hours later. The majority of the assaults were committed in the Soviet occupation zone. Estimates of the numbers of German women raped by Soviet soldiers have ranged up to 2 million. According to historian William Hitchcock, in many cases women were the victims of repeated rapes, some as many as 60 to 70 times. At least 100,000 women are believed to have been raped in Berlin, based on surging abortion rates in the following months and contemporary hospital reports, with an estimated 10,000 women dying in the aftermath. Female deaths in connection with the rapes in Germany, overall, are estimated at 240,000. Antony Bivor describes it as the greatest phenomenon of mass rape in history, and has concluded that at least 1.4 million women were raped in East Prussia, Pomerania and Silesia alone. According to Natalia Guess, Soviet soldiers raped German females from 8 to 80 years old. Soviet and Polish women were not spared either. When General Siganov, head of the political department of the First Ukrainian Front, reported to Moscow the mass rape of Soviet women deported to East Germany for forced labor, he recommended that the Soviet women be prevented from describing their ordeal on their return to Russia. When Yugoslav politician Milovan Gilas complained about rapes in Yugoslavia, Stalin reportedly stated that he should understand it if a soldier who has crossed thousands of kilometers through blood and fire and death has fun with a woman or takes some trifle. On another occasion, when told that Red Army soldiers sexually maltreated German refugees, he reportedly said, We lecture our soldiers too much, let them have their initiative. Historian Norman Nymark writes that after mid-1945, Soviet soldiers caught raping civilians were usually punished to some degree, ranging from arrest to execution. The rapes continued until the winter of 1947-48, when Soviet occupation authorities finally confined Soviet troops to strictly guarded posts and camps, separating them from the residential population in the Soviet zone of Germany. <inaudible> <inaudible> studies In his analysis of the motives behind the extensive Soviet rapes, Norman Nymark singles out hate propaganda, personal experiences of suffering at home, and an allegedly fully demeaning picture of German women in the press, not to mention among the soldiers themselves," as a part reason for the widespread rapes. Nymark also noted the effect that tendency to binge drink alcohol of which much was available in Germany had on the propensity of Soviet soldiers to commit rape, especially rape murder. Nymark also notes the allegedly patriarchal nature of Russian culture, and of the Asian societies comprising the Soviet Union, where dishonor was in the past repaid by raping the women of the enemy. The fact that the Germans had a much higher standard of living visible even when in ruins, may well have contributed allegedly to a national inferiority complex among Russians. Combining Russian feelings of inferiority the resulting need to restore honor, and their desire for revenge may be the reason many women were raped in public as well as in front of husbands before both were killed. According to Antony Bivor, revenge was not the only reason for the frequent rapes, but the Soviet troops' feeling of entitlement to all types of spoils of war, including women, was an important factor as well. 
Bivor exemplifies this with his discovery that Soviet troops also raped Soviet and Polish girls and women that were liberated from Nazi concentration camps as well as those who were held for forced labor at farms and factories. Colonel Ivan Busick, director of Russia's Institute of Military History, cited Soviet Army General Ivan Tretiak, who said there was not a single case of violence committed by men in his regiment. Tretiak said that although he wanted revenge, Stalin's orders on treating the population humanely were implemented, and discipline in the army strengthened. Tretiak said that in such a huge military group as that in Germany, there was bound to be cases of sexual misconduct, as men had not seen women in years. However, he explains that sexual relations were not always violent, but often involved mutual consent. The work of Bivor and others alleging mass rape is characterized by Tretiak as filthy cynicism, because the vast majority of those who have been slandered cannot reply to these liars." Richard Overy, a historian from King's College London, has criticized the viewpoint held by the Russians, asserting that they refused to acknowledge Soviet war crimes committed during the war. Partly this is because they felt that much of it was justified vengeance against an enemy who committed much worse, and partly it was because they were writing the victor's history. Jeffrey Roberts writes that the Red Army raped women in every country they passed through, but mostly in Austria and Germany, 70,000 to 100,000 rapes in Vienna, and hundreds of thousands of rapes in Germany. He notes that the German army probably committed tens of thousands of rapes on the Eastern Front, but that murder was the more typical crime for them, according to Oligers Heshevsky, head of war history at the Russian Academy of Sciences 4,148 Red Army officers and a significant number of soldiers were convicted of atrocities for crimes committed against German civilians. Mahmud Gureyev, president of the Academy of Military Sciences, who participated in the East Prussia campaign, said that he had not heard about sexual violence. He said that after what the Nazis did to Russia, excesses were likely to take place, but that such cases were strongly suppressed and punished, and were not widespread. He notes that the Soviet military leadership on 19 January 1945 signed an executive order calling on the avoidance of a rough relationship with the local population. Gureyev said that Bivor copied Goebbels' propaganda about the "...aggressive sexuality of our soldiers." According to Russia historian A. Jakov, The Germans did not experience a fraction of the horror that their soldiers staged in the East. Despite some excesses, which were firmly suppressed by the command, the Red Army as a whole behaved toward the people of the Reich with humanity. The Russian soldiers are credited with feeding the German population, rescuing children, and helping to restore normal life in the country. In 2015, Beaver's books were banned in some Russian schools and colleges. A documentary book, War's Unwomanly Face by Svetlana Alexievich, includes memories by Soviet veterans about their experience in Germany. A member of the Soviet military is quoted as saying, The Germans were afraid that we are animals. They cut their wrists and stoke, whole families. We stopped and searched a house, nothing. Then a mother and daughter were found in the attic. They were frightened about as soon as the Russians arrive, there will be rape, robbery, murder, Siberia, prisons. But suddenly, nothing. They knew what became of Stalingrad, which transformed into the whole of Russia, as they saw in the cinema. And of course, they imagined that the same thing would happen now on German soil. Our refusal to take revenge amazed them. According to a former army officer, We were young, strong, and four years without women. So we tried to catch German women and Ten men raped one girl. There were not enough women, the entire population run from the Soviet army. So we had to take young, 12 or 13 year old. If she cried, we put something into her mouth. We thought it was fun. Now I cannot understand how I did it. A boy from a good family. But that was me. A woman telephone operator from the Soviet army recalled that. When we occupied every town, we had first three days for looting and rapes. That was unofficial of course. But after three days one could be court-martialed for doing this. I remember one raped German woman laying naked, with hand grenade between her legs. Now I feel shame, but I did not feel shame back then. Do you think it was easy to forgive the Germans? We hated to see their clean undamaged white houses. With roses. 
I wanted them to suffer. I wanted to see their tears. Decades had to pass until I started feeling pity for them." Russian war veteran Sevalid Olympiev wrote, "...the Soviet soldiers' relations with the German population where it had stayed may be called indifferent and neutral. Nobody, at least from our regiment, harassed or touched them. Moreover, when we came across an obviously starving German family with kids we would share our food with them with no unnecessary words." Topic. Social effects The exact number of German women and girls raped by Soviet troops during the war and occupation is uncertain, but Western historians estimate their numbers are likely in the hundreds of thousands, and possibly as many as two million. The number of babies, who came to be known as Russian children, born as a result is unknown. However, most rapes did not result in pregnancies, and many pregnancies did not result in the victims giving birth. Abortions were the preferred choice of rape victims, and many died as a consequence of internal injuries after being brutally violated, untreated sexually transmitted diseases due to a lack of medicine, badly performed abortions, and suicides, particularly for traumatized victims who had been raped many times. In addition, many children died in post-war Germany as a result of widespread starvation, scarce supplies, and diseases such as typhus and diphtheria. The infant mortality in Berlin reached up to 90%. As to the social effects of this sexual violence Norman Neimark notes, In any case, just as each rape survivor carried the effects of the crime with her till the end of her life, so was the collective anguish nearly unbearable. The social psychology of women and men in the Soviet zone of occupation was marked by the crime of rape from the first days of occupation, through the founding of the GDR in the fall of 1949, until, one could argue, the present. West Berliners and women of the wartime generation refer to the Soviet War Memorial in Treptower Park, Berlin, as the Tomb of the Unknown Rapist. In response to the mass rapes by Red Army soldiers in the years following 1945, Hanalora Kohl, the wife of former West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, had been gang raped at age 12 by Soviet soldiers in May 1945, according to her biographer. As a consequence, she sustained a serious lifelong back injury after being thrown out of a first-floor window. She had been suffering long and serious illnesses that experts thought of as the consequence of childhood trauma. Hanalora committed suicide in 2001. Topic. In Russian literature Alexander Solzhenitsyn took part in the invasion of Germany, and wrote a poem about it, Prussian Knights. 22 Hoering Strasse. It's not been burned, just looted, rifled. A moaning by the walls, half muffled, the mothers wounded, half alive. The little daughters on the mattress, dead. How many have been on it? A platoon, a company perhaps? A girl's been turned into a woman, a woman turned into a corpse. The mother begs. Soldier, kill me. Quote, quote. Topic. In popular culture As most women recoiled from their experiences and had no desire to recount them, most biographies and depictions of the period, like the German film Downfall, alluded to mass rape by the Red Army but stopped shy of mentioning it explicitly. As time has progressed more works have been produced that have directly addressed the issue, such as the books The 158-Pound Marriage and My Story 1961 by Gemma LaGuardia Gluck reissued as Fiorello's sister, Gemma LaGuardia Gluck's story Religion, Theology, and the Holocaust 2007, Expanded Edition, or the 2006 films Joy Division and The Good German. The topic is the subject of much feminist discourse. The first autobiographical work depicting the events was the groundbreaking 1954 book A Woman in Berlin, which was made into a 2008 feature film. It was widely rejected in Germany after its initial publication but has seen a new acceptance and many women have found inspiration to come forward with their own stories. U.S. <laughs> troops <laughs> In Taken by Force, J. Robert Lilly estimates the number of rapes committed by U.S. servicemen in Germany to be 11,000. 
As in the case of the American occupation of France after the D-Day invasion, many of the American rapes in Germany in 1945 were gang rapes committed by armed soldiers at gunpoint. Although non-fraternization policies were instituted for the Americans in Germany, the phrase "copulation without conversation is not fraternization" was used as a motto by United States Army troops. The journalist Osmer White, a war correspondent from Australia who served with the American troops during the war, wrote that after the fighting moved on to German soil, there was a good deal of rape by combat troops and those immediately following them. The incidents varied between unit and unit according to the attitude of the commanding officer. In some cases offenders were identified, tried by court-martial, and punished. The Army legal branch was reticent, but admitted that for brutal or perverted sexual offenses against German women, some soldiers had been shot, particularly if they happened to be Negroes. Yet I know for a fact that many women were raped by white Americans. No action was taken against the culprits. In one sector a report went round that a certain very distinguished army commander made the wisecrack, copulation without conversation does not constitute fraternization. As in the eastern sector of the occupation, the number of rapes peaked in 1945, but a high rate of violence against the German and Austrian populations by the Americans lasted at least into the first half of 1946, with five cases of dead German women found in American barracks in May and June 1946 alone. Carol Huntington writes that the American soldiers who raped German women and then left gifts of food for them may have permitted themselves to view the act as a prostitution rather than rape. Citing the work of a Japanese historian alongside this suggestion, Huntington writes that Japanese women who begged for food were raped and soldiers sometimes left food for those they raped. In 2015, German news magazine Der Spiegel reported that German historian Miriam Gebhardt believes that members of the U.S. military raped as many as 190,000 German women by the time West Germany regained sovereignty in 1955, with most of the assaults taking place in the months immediately following the U.S. invasion of Nazi Germany. The author bases her claims in large part on reports kept by Bavarian priests in the summer of 1945. British troops Many rapes were committed under the effects of alcohol or post-traumatic stress, but some cases of premeditated attacks. For example, in the village of Oil, near Nineberg, an attempted rape of two local girls at gunpoint by two soldiers ended in the death of one of the women when, whether intentionally or not, one of the soldiers discharged his gun, hitting her in the neck. Other cases, such as an assault on three German women in the town of Neustadt am Rubenberg have been reported. On a single day in mid-April 1945, three women in Neustadt were raped by British soldiers. One author quotes a senior British Army chaplain as reporting that there was a good deal of rape going on, but adds that this probably referred to attacks by former slave laborers seeking revenge. Topic. French troops. French troops took part in the invasion of Germany, and France was assigned an occupation zone in Germany. Perry Bittescombe quotes the original survey estimates that the French for instance committed 385 rapes in the Constance area, 600 in Bruchel, and 500 in Freudenstadt. French soldiers were alleged to have committed widespread rape in the Hofingen district near Leonberg. Katz and Kaiser, though they mention rape, found no specific occurrences in either Hofingen or Leonberg compared to other towns. According to Norman Nymark, French Moroccan troops matched the behavior of Soviet troops when it came to rape, in particular in the early occupation of Baden and Württemberg, provided the numbers are correct. Topic. Discourse It has been frequently repeated that the wartime rapes were surrounded by decades of silence or, until relatively recently, ignored by academics, with the prevailing attitude being that the Germans were the perpetrators of war crimes, Soviet writings speaking only of Russian liberation and German guilt, and Western historians concentrating on the details of the Holocaust. In post war Germany, especially in West Germany, the wartime rape stories became an essential part of political discourse and that the rape of German women, along with the expulsion of Germans from the East, and Allied occupation had been universalized in an attempt to situate the German population on the whole as victims. However, it has been argued that it was not a universal 
story of women being raped by men, but of German women being abused and violated by an army that fought Nazi Germany and liberated death camps. See also Comfort women German camp brothels in World War II Moroccanate rape after the Battle of Monte Cassino Prostitutes in South Korea for the U.S. military Rape during the liberation of France Rape during the liberation of Poland 1944 Rape during the occupation of Japan Recreation and Amusement Association Soviet war crimes Stunned Null War crimes of the Wehrmacht, mass rapes Wartime sexual violence Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Nymark, Norman M. The Russians in Germany, A History of the Soviet Zone of Occupation, 1945–1949. Cambridge, Belknap Press. ISBN 0-674-78405-7. Alexeyevich, Svetlana 1988. War's Unwomanly Face. Moscow, Progress Publishers. ISBN 978-5010004941, translated from original edition in Russian, Alexeyevich Svetlana 2008. U Voiny ne Zensko Liko in Russian. Moscow, Vremya Publishers. ISBN 978-5-9691-0331-3. Note, citations in text are given in reference to the Russian edition. McDonough, Giles 2009. After the Reich, The Brutal History of the Allied Occupation. Basic Books. ISBN 0465003389. Dak, Mikkel June 2008. Crimes committed by Soviet soldiers against German civilians, 1944–1945, a historiographical analysis." Journal of Military and Strategic Studies, 10 4, 